The agenda for today's presentation covers analog to digital conversion. We will look at six topics, which include analog to digital converter types, accuracy and resolution, noise histograms, effective number of bits, the ENOB test, and analog to digital converter output averaging. Voltage to frequency ADCs convert the analog input voltage to a pulse train with the frequency proportional to the amplitude of the input. The pulses are counted over a fixed period to determine the frequency and the pulse counter output in turn represents the digital voltage. Voltage to frequency converters inherently have a high noise rejection characteristic because the input signal is effectively integrated over the counting interval. Voltage to frequency conversion is commonly used to convert slow and noisy signals. Voltage to frequency ADCs are also widely used for remote sensing in noisy environments. The input voltage is converted to a frequency at the remote location and the digital pulse train is transmitted over a pair of wires to the counter. This eliminates noise that can be introduced in the transmission lines of an analog signal over a relatively long distance. Analog to digital converter manufacturers frequently verify their device's accuracy or the effect of nonlinearities by running a code density test. They apply a highly accurate sine wave signal with precision amplitude and frequency to the device and using a histogram for analysis generate a distribution of digital codes at the output of the converter. A perfect ADC would produce only one vertical bar in the histogram for the specified input frequency and amplitude because it measured only one value for every sample. But because the ADC's inherent nonlinearities, it produces a distribution of bars on either side representing digital words sorted into different code bins. Each bin is labeled for a single digital output code, and it contains a count of its occurrence or the number of times that the code showed up in the output. When n represents the ADC's bit resolution, two to the n bins are required. The width of each code bin should be FSR divided by two to the n, where FSR is the full scale range of the ADC. The probability density function may be determined from these data. A large number of samples must be taken, depending on the ADC's size, for the histogram test to be meaningful. The more bits the ADC contains, the higher the number of samples required, which could be as much as 500,000 samples. Successive approximation converters are composed of a digital to analog converter, commonly called a DAC, a single comparator, and some control logic and registers. When the analog voltage to be measured is present at the input to the comparator, the system control logic initially sets all bits to zero. Then the DAC's most significant bit, or MSB, is set to one, which forces the DAC output to one half of full scale. In the case of a 10 volt DC full scale system, the DAC outputs five volts. The comparator then compares the analog output of the DAC to the input signal. And if the DAC output is lower than the input signal, that is, the signal is greater than one half full scale, the most significant bit, called MSB, remains sit at one. If the DAC output is higher than the input signal, the MSB resets to zero. Next, the second MSB, with a weight of one quarter of full scale, turns on and forces the output of the DAC to either three quarters full scale, that is, if the MSB remained at one, or one quarter full scale if the MSB reset to zero. The comparator once more compares the DAC output to the input signal and the second bit either remains on if the DAC output is lower than the input signal or resets to zero if the DAC output is higher than the input signal. The third MSB is then compared the same way and the process continues in order of descending bit weight until the least significant bit, or LSB, is compared. At the end of the process, the output register contains a digital code representing the analog input signal. Successive approximation ADCs are relatively slow because the comparisons run serially and the ADC must pause at each step to set the DAC and wait for its output to settle. 
However, the conversion rates easily can reach over 1 MHz. Also, 12 and 16-bit successive approximation ADCs are relatively inexpensive, which accounts for their wide use in many PC-based data acquisition systems. To view the remainder of this tutorial, please visit the on-demand tutorials in the resources section on Measurement Computing's website at www.mccdac.com.